Another important pre-orgo topic is understanding the periodic table. You will notice that every square on the table represents another atom, and within the square you have specific information about the atom. We'll use the carbon atom as an example. In the center of the square you have the letter which represents the atom, in this case carbon. Some tables will have the name of the element above, but this is not as important because you are expected to know this. The whole number represents the atomic number, and this tells you how many protons are in the atom. And sometimes you will find a longer number with a decimal, and this represents the atomic mass of the atom. Some tables will have the information I've shown you, some will have more or less, but the idea is the same. So make sure you're familiar reading the table. Now let's look at trends on the actual table. The way the atoms are organized are so that elements with similar chemical characteristics are grouped together. And as you move left to right across the table, you will notice that the atomic number increases by one. As you move towards the right on the table, you have what are called your periods. And as you move down the table, you have what are called your groups. Now the groups are going to share valence electrons, and that's why they will also share the chemical characteristics. Because remember that valence electrons will determine how an atom reacts, so having the same number of valence electrons makes them react in a similar manner. On the left, we have the alkali metals, and in the center, we have the transition metals. The alkali and transition metals share metal or metallic characteristic in that they are shiny, tend to conduct electricity, and are solid at room temperature. The one exception is mercury, which is liquid at room temperature. To the right of the metals, you have the weird staircase separation, which includes your metalloids. And metalloids are unique in that they share characteristics with both metals and nonmetals. And towards the right of your metals, obviously you have your nonmetals. Nonmetals tend to be in the gas phase for the smaller atoms, but as you go down the table and they get larger, you get liquid for bromine and solid for iodine. Specific groups within the nonmetals include group number seven, which are your halogen, also called halides in organic chemistry. And all the way to the right, you have your noble gases. Noble gases, as their name suggests, are atoms that act like nobility and don't like to mix with other atoms. This is because they have full octets and therefore have no desire for other electrons and therefore no desire to interact with other atoms. All the way on the bottom, we have what are called your lanthanide and your actinide series. However, given that they don't play a role in the standard organic chemistry course, we won't be looking at them in these tutorials. There are two important periodic table trends that you have to recognize in organic chemistry. And the first is electronegativity. Recall that electronegativity is a measure of how strongly an atom desires the electrons of another atom. And this can be in terms of taking the electrons or sharing the electrons. As you move towards the right, and as you move upwards on the periodic table, electronegativity increases. You can summarize this by drawing one arrow moving upward and towards the right, starting from francium and ending at fluorine. Notice that I excluded the noble gases from this trend, and that is because noble gases have full octets, don't react with other atoms, and therefore have no desire for the electrons from another atom. The second trend I want you to recognize is size. As you move down the table and as you move leftwards on the table, the size of an atom will increase. You can summarize this as one arrow that moves down and left on the table. And keeping in mind that hydrogen and helium are smaller atoms, 
but the general trend goes from fluorine to francium. Given this information, you don't have to refer to your general chemistry charts where you look at specific numbers for electronegativity and size, but instead you can simply look at the table, compare the location of two atoms, and based on knowing the arrow trend, you can recognize which atom is bigger and which atom is more electronegative. And now that you understand the basics of the periodic table, it's time to memorize it. Well, I'm just kidding, but only partly. There are 10 atoms that I want you to memorize their order and placement on the periodic table. And as we continue with the tutorials, you will understand why. The atoms are as follows. Hydrogen in the first period. In the second period, we have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Below that, we have phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and the halogens continue bromine and iodine. The reason I want you to memorize these atoms is because in organic chemistry, a course of understanding, you don't want to constantly have to go back to your periodic table to look at these basic concepts. Instead, you can simply understand and recognize what you're looking at. The first thing you want to know is valence electrons. Hydrogen in the first row is one. Jumping over to carbon, we have four, five, six, and seven. Another key trend to recognize, of course, is electronegativity, which is upwards and towards the right, and size, which is downwards and towards the left. Now, why only these 10? In organic chemistry, you're typically looking at your organic atoms, which are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Phosphorus and sulfur play an important role, and your halogens are going to come into play when you have reactions. So if you know where they are on the table, how they are in relation to each other, and their valence electrons, you're going to have a much easier time doing these reactions. And be sure to join me in the next videos where I talk about atomic orbitals and electron configuration. I hope you enjoyed this video. Test your knowledge of this topic by taking the free quiz link below. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Have questions? Post them in the comments below or use the contact form on layofersci.com forward slash contact. I also offer online private tutoring via Skype. For a full list of subjects covered and additional study information, visit me at leahforsci.com.